Conversation bots can do many things within Microsoft Teams client. They can subscribe to a channel or a group chat events, listen for and act on message, Microsoft Teams specific events, and even update their own message. So in this section, we're gonna talk about how to expand on your existing bot and add some of this functionality. We're specifically gonna talk a little bit more about conversational bots and Microsoft Teams, and then channeling group chat conversations with a Microsoft Teams bot. Microsoft Teams sends notifications to your bot for events that happen in scopes where your bot is active. You can capture these events in your code and take action on them, such as the following. Triggering a welcome message when your bot is added to a team, or triggering a welcome message when a new team member is added or removed from a team, and triggering a notification when a channel is created, renamed, or deleted, and when a bot is linked to by a user. A bot receives a conversation update event when it has been added to a conversation and other members uh, have been added to or removed from the conversation or when conversation metadata has changed. The conversation update event is sent to your bot when it receives information on the membership updates for teams where it's been added. And it also receives an update when it has been added for the first time, specifically for personal conversations. Microsoft Teams will notify your bot of many different events that occur within Microsoft Teams. So for example, the channel created event is sent to your bot whenever a new channel is created on a team when your bot is installed in. You can handle this event within your bot with the following code that you see here on the slide. Your conversation bot can subscribe to any of the following events related to your channels, channel members, and teams unique to Microsoft Teams. There's the team member added and removed event uh, and for team member events. You've also got the channel created, renamed, and deleted for channel events. And then for team events, you've also got the team renamed event. There's also events for reactions, such as rea reaction added and reaction removed. Your bot can also handle instances where a user has reacted to one of your bot's messages, and this is done by monitoring the events, reactions added, or reactions removed. Now, by adding the Teams or group chat scope to your bot, it can be available to in be installed uh, in a team or group chat, and this allows members of the conversation to interact with your bot. Once installed, it'll also have access to metadata about the conversation, like the list of conversation members. And when installed in a team, uh, it's going to have details about the team and the full list of channels. Bots in a group or channel only receive messages when they are mentioned, like at bot. Um, they don't receive any other messages that are sent to the conversation. Now remember, the bot must be at mentioned directly. The bot's not going to receive messages when uh, when the team or channel is mentioned or when someone replies to a message from your bot without at mentioning it. Now, every message to your bot from a group or a channel will contain an at mention with its own name in the message text. So you'll need to ensure that your message parsing handles that. Your bot can also retrieve other users mentioned in the message and add mentions to any uh, messages that it's going to send. You also might want to strip mentions from the text uh, so you might want to get rid of any of the at mentions from the text of the message that your bot receives. So that's a common thing that you might want to end up doing. And then you also want to be able to uh, retrieve the mentions. So mentions are returned in, entity, in an entity object uh, in a payload, and it contains both the unique ID of the user and in most cases, the name of the user that was mentioned. The text of the message will also uh, include the mention in the format of having like these uh, brackets uh, like HTML style brackets or XML brackets of at with at John Smith in the middle of them. However, you shouldn't rely on the text in the message to retrieve any information about the user because it's possible for the, the person that sends the message to alter it. So instead, you should use the actual entity object uh, that you're receiving. Now, your bot can also update existing messages that the bot that was created, but not any of the messages um, that were created by others. The following code that you see here on the slide is demonstrating how to update an existing message. Notice the reply to ID property on the activity that started uh, the turn. I can use the update activity method to update the existing method, a message. In addition, your bot can also handle its own messages as the following code on this slide demonstrates.